So I asked you guys if f of x is the tangent function. I said let's find a few derivatives. And we know that f prime of x is secant squared of x. We know that from our work that we did before on the board. Okay? We use the quotient rule because tangent is sine over cosine. And now if I want to find the second derivative, people were asking me about simplifying and things like that. I guess I would think of this as secant x times secant x. <laughs> That's what secant squared means. And so I'm thinking that this is my u and this is my v. And so what's the product rule tell me to do? It tells me to do u prime v plus what? u v prime. So I'll go ahead and do that. So let's see, the second derivative, I need the derivative of secant. And we said from our little chart that that's secant x tangent x. Now v here would be another secant x, right? Plus, well here I have <coughs> u is secant x, and v prime, that's another derivative of secant, so that's secant x tangent x. So far so good? <laughs> Bless you. So I'm getting that this second derivative is secant squared x tangent x plus secant squared x tangent x, right? If I just write things in alphabetical order, you put the secants before the tangents, and then we get that. That's okay? So now I guess I would say that my second derivative, since I have this plus itself, why don't we write it as 2 secant squared x tangent of x. Is this okay? Devin, you got a question or are you? No, I was just making sure that there was any there. I thought it was wrong. I understand what you're saying. You saw me putting parentheses here. I didn't have to, did I? I could just write secant x, tangent x, secant x. I guess I put them there so you would know which one is u prime. But, but it doesn't mean distribute unless you have what right here? A plus sign. There's no plus sign, right? So it's, just, it's really just three things multiplied together. So, you know, I could put parentheses around all of them, too. But anyways, let me go ahead and compute the third derivative for you in case you did that. And I'll tell you how I'm going to do it. I'm going to do my product rule again. Well, first of all, hmm. How about we do this? How about we just write down the two? You guys understand that when there's a constant in front of a function, you can just kind of forget about it, right? Bring it down. And so what I'm really doing here is just finding the derivative of these pieces, secant squared x and tangent of x. And that's a product. I'll call this one u, and I'll call this one v. And so what's going to go in parentheses here is, again, u prime v plus u v prime. Does that make sense to people? Okay. So I have to do u prime. I have to do the derivative of secant squared. Didn't I just do that? I don't want to repeat all that work, right? Look what I did. I had secant squared. What's the derivative of secant squared? 2 secant squared x tangent of x, right? So that's going to be my u prime. 2 secant squared x tangent of x times v. What's v? v is tangent of x. Okay. Plus where it says u, what am I going to write? Secant squared x. 
and where it says v prime, what am I going to write? Yeah, the derivative of tangent we know is secant squared x, right? So I'll write that down. What a mess. What a mess. So I mean, how you, how you write this final answer, I, I don't know, um, to make it nice. I mean, if I distribute everything through, one way to write this final answer would be four secant squared x tangent squared x plus two secant fourth of x. That's one way you could write it, I guess. Another way you might consider writing it is to take out a common factor. Is there a common factor I could take out? See, I take out that, that red secant squared is both places. Let me pull that out and see what it looks like. So if I pull that out, I have in front, so or, I have 2 secant squared x times, let's see, I have 2 tangent squared x plus secant squared x. Yeah, I don't know. There's a lot of ways to, to mess around with that, and I, I'm not going to go there. I think I think you... Oh, okay. Let me show you a couple things that happened. That's a good question. First of all, where did the 2 come from? The 2 came from me distributing the 2. Oh. Where did the secant fourth come from? That came from secant squared times secant squared. So they came from different places. But at this point, we're just kind of pushing trig functions around. I mean, it's not, not doing much for me at this point. I'm kind of like, yeah, this problem's done, over, all right? But we've, at least we have some practice using the product rule, using the quotient rule, and taking derivatives of trig functions. So one of the lessons for today, right, is derivatives of trig functions, three, four. The other lesson I said I was going to cover today is what do derivatives mean? Thinking of derivatives of rates as rates of change. All right? And so we just mentioned one yesterday that in the physics classroom, suppose you have a function that represents position. Suppose you have that. Well, then what's the first derivative going to represent? If this is position versus time, let's say. If you have a function position versus time, what's the first derivative going to represent? Velocity. And then what's the second derivative? Well, that's the derivative of the velocity. And that's going to be your acceleration. Okay? And so the book talks about this a little bit. So maybe I'll jump there next. Okay. So this is 47. I'm supposed to find the derivative of this function g of x. And what I would advise here, if I had this problem, I would begin by simplifying it. Okay, so right away, what do you think I'm going to do? Yep, multiply that x, distribute. So I have g of x equals 3x minus x squared over 2x squared, right? And I'm still going to simplify because that can be written as two separate fractions, right? g of x is... 3x over 2x squared minus x squared over 2x squared. And that makes it even nicer because now what you have is you have g of x equals, well, what about the second fraction? The x squareds cancel and you just get minus 1 half, right? Because those x squareds are going to cancel. The first fraction I claim is 3 halves 
and let's write it as x to the negative 1 power. Wow. I didn't use any product rule. I didn't use any quotient rule. And what I'm about to do now is get the derivative. g prime of x would be, do you see it? It's going to be negative 3 halves. You see how I got that? x to the what? Negative 2 plus 0 if you want because the derivative of that constant is 0. So I am guessing that the answer they have is going to be negative 3 divided by, they'll probably make that positive exponent and make it 2x squared. This is what I would get. Is that what they got? Okay. Now, moral of the story. I guess moral of the story is product rules and quotient rules are nice. But if you can simplify first, sometimes you save yourself a lot of work. I'm going to try this 77. Here I go. So 77 says, and again, this is all section 3.3. Um, come up with a formula for the derivative of f of x times g of x times h of x. Okay. I guess if you're going to use the product rule, we need to have something called u. So I'm going to make u equal to f. And I'm going to make v be g times h. And if I do that, then I know my answer will be u prime v plus u v prime. I know that's my answer. Now, to make, to make things work better, I'm going to stop writing the parentheses with the x in them, kind of like I never do with u and v. So remember, f, g, and h are all functions of x, but just to save time, where it says u prime, instead of writing f prime of x, let's just write f prime. You guys okay with that? And then where it says v, what would I write? gh. Plus, and where it says u, I would write f. But now where it says v prime, I need the derivative of this product which means I have to use product rule again. That's why they said you have to use the product rule quite, twice. So I'm going to say that doing the product rule on that product, I get g prime h plus g h prime. Right? That's the pattern. u prime v plus u v prime. Because that's the derivative of what v is. v is a product itself. So now, to come up with the formula, the final answer is going to be f prime g h plus, I'll distribute the f here, f g prime h plus f g h prime. And once you understand that, that's really kind of cool. Because now, if I want to find the derivative of a product, I understand how to do it. I take the derivative of each one of the factors separately and just put it with the other functions not taking the derivative. And then I'll add all those pieces together. And see, that's what they want me to do in part B. So I'll try part B next. They say, let's take a look at it, use the formula to find the derivative of, now it says, what, square root of x times x minus 1 times x plus 3. Could I find that derivative by simplifying first? I could. But it would take a while to simplify that, and you'd have x to the 1 half power and 
You can do it. But I have a feeling this new product rule is going to be nice. So let's see if we can do it this way. So let's go. And I wrote the, the problem down below. And so again, the idea, if I call these things F, G, and H, okay, what I have to do is take the derivative of F times GH, and then take the derivative of G and multiply by F and H, and then F times G times H prime. That's the idea. Right? That's what I proved in part A. So let's see what we get. All right, I'm going to take the derivative of the square root of x. What's that give me? That's going to be, well, remember, how do you rewrite square root of x? x to the 1 half. So f prime would be 1 half x to the negative 1 half. Right? That's bing, bing, bong. We haven't learned bong yet. That's Friday. You guys with me? And now I'll write down g, which is x minus 1. And I'll write down h, which is x plus 3. Well, this is 77b. Plus f, that's the square root of x. g prime. Oh, what's g prime? Right, it's just 1. Because the derivative of x is 1 and the derivative of negative 1 is 0. So times 1 times h, that's x plus 3 plus square root of x times x minus 1 times h prime, which is 1. I'm going to bet they simplified a little bit, right? You guys have the answer? This is not it, is it? OK, let's see if I can simplify a little bit and get the same answer they have. So when I see x to the negative 1 half, I want to put it in the denominator. So I'm going to write this as, how about I write it this way? x plus 1 times x plus 3 over 2 square root of x. x minus one. Yeah. Oh, x minus 1, thank you. That's a minus. Let's get it right. x minus 1. Not plus, minus. OK. Plus, Let's distribute. I would have x square root of x plus 3 square root of x plus x square root of x minus square root of x. Okay, so now I'll correctly write it as a minus. x minus 1 times x plus 3 over 2 square root of x plus... Well, what do you get when you add x square root of x and x square root of x? You get... 2x square root of x. And then what about here? I get plus 2 square root of x. Huh. Is that the answer they have? Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. <laughs> Did I hear? It's not the answer they have. Do they have the answer as one big fraction? Ah, that's very typical. <laughs> it's nice sometimes to write your answers as one big fraction. And we'll see why in chapter 4. Not yet. All right. Well, if I'm going to write it as one big fraction, I'm going to have to add some fractions together. So I'll put this over 1 and I'll put that over 1, I guess. Is this okay? All right. So we need to add some fractions. So what's the common denominator that I want to get? All right. So let me rewrite this first fraction. If, if they're going to, I'm going to distribute here. I'm going to get, let's see, x squared um, plus 2x minus 3. I don't know if they did, but that's not hard. And now here we have, I want to multiply top and bottom by what? By 2 square root of x. Okay, so when I do that, this second fraction becomes something over 2 square root of x. Let's see, I'll have to kind of distribute it. So when I multiply by 2 square root of x times this, I get 4. 
square root of x times square root of x is x times the other x is x squared. And then I get 4x. Aha. Now we're getting somewhere. So now the answer I'm getting is 5x squared plus 6x minus 3 over 2 square root of x. Is that the answer they have? Yes? All right, I'm happy then. Yeah, some people said I can't do the algebra at the end to figure out if I have it. But now we have it. Okay. Good. Fun.